In this video, we will show that the center of a group G is a subgroup of G. So let G be a group. Then the center of G, denoted as follows, is the following subset of G. It's the subset of the group G consisting of all of the elements Z of G satisfying the following. GZ is equal to ZG for all elements little g of our group G. Recall that if we have two elements G and Z of a group G satisfying GZ is equal to ZG, then we say that these two elements of the group commute. And therefore the center of a group G consists of all of the elements of G which commute with every element of our group G. Now, given any group G, the center of that group always exists. So the center is always non-empty because the identity element belongs to the center. If we have any element G in our group G, G multiplied by the identity element is always going to be equal to just G itself. And that's always going to be equal to the identity element of our group multiplied by that element G. Now, if we have any two elements, Z and T, of our center, and an arbitrary element G of our group G, then this product here, ZTG, is going to be equal to ZGT. T and G commute because T belongs to the center of G. And that this here is going to be equal to GZT because this Z and this G are also going to commute because Z belongs to the center of G. And what we've shown here, we've shown actually that the product of any two elements in the center of G belongs to the center of G. ZTG is equal to GZT. And as this G here was arbitrary, this holds for any element G in our group G. Now, given an element Z in the center of the group, if we pick any element G in our group G, we have that G multiplied by Z inverse is going to equal Z inverse, Z, G, Z inverse. All we've done here is attach an identity element to the left-hand side, and we've re written that as Z inverse Z. Now, because by assumption, this Z belongs to the center of G, this Z and this G here are going to commute. So we can rewrite this now as Z inverse G, Z, Z inverse. And now this Z and this Z inverse are going to cancel. So we're going to be left with Z inverse G. And what we've shown here is that for any element in the center of a group, its inverse also belongs to the center of that group. And what we've actually shown here, we've shown that the center is a subgroup of G. This follows immediately from this note here, this third point, and this fourth point. Recall that to prove that a subset of a group is a subgroup, we have to show that it's non-empty. That's guaranteed by this two because the identity element belongs to the center. And then three tells us that for any two elements in the center, their product is in the center. And finally, four shows that for any element in the center, its inverse is in the center. So we've certainly verified here that the center of a group G is a subgroup of G.